Okay, week eight, I need to apologize. I just did a whole bunch talking about the rule of 72 relating to problem 80 on the homework. And is there a final exam problem, a random homework problem that corresponds with the rule of 72? I don't think so. Let's check real quick. I'm not even sure because I've never heard of the rule of 72. Uh, I think we only really talked about it one day, so if you are not here that day. Oops. No, there's no rule of 72 in the random problems, which maybe next term I will change, but for this term, that's good. Uh, can I answer through? I don't see any of the final examples. Okay, so we have a new topic today, unless there's more review questions. Do we have more review questions? Sure. Um, a good question. So Tom is buying a painting, costs 100 bucks. It's Eric. His friend Eric buys a painting for 200 and they both go up 30 bucks. What's the percent increase for each? So I could do this or does someone else want to do it? Okay, my turn. So. Well, I use the... <coughs> Across multiply. You could use a proportion and cross proportion. multiply. Yeah. I'm going to do the quick one. And if you love proportions, McKenna, let me know and we can do it that way. But the, the quick formula is that the percent change is the change divided by original. And this is a great segue for pricing, by the way. So thank you. So anytime you have a change, I'm gaining or losing weight, something's going on sale, right, then that's our general formula. It's sometimes tricky to think what's the original, and sometimes not, depends on the situation. The other thing that could trip people up is lots of problems don't tell you the change. They tell you the dress went on sale, here's the old price, here's the new price, and you have to subtract to find the change. So just be aware that plug in the change, not the old and new. Okay, in this case, we have two parts. We have the Tom and the Eric. So Tom has percent change. His change is 30. His original is 100. So we get 0.3. We're going to rip lop. We're going into percent, so to the right, and we get 30%. We also have Eric. He has the same thing, pretty much, except his original is 200. So his is going to be 15%. Okay, does that much make sense so far? Yeah, I think that's way easier than Okay. Some people love the proportion method. That's good. Some people love plugging in for So how can they have different percent appreciation when they both wound up by 30? It was 30 for both. Why is the percent difference? The ratio is different. Between 100 and 130, you lose 200, you're 230. Someone else have other words for that? The original is just 
Thirty dollars is a bigger share of a hundred than it is of two hundred. Something like that. Whatever words make sense in your brain. Oh, okay. So our new topic is actually did you, anyone else have other problems? You might have a bunch because you just took your midterm last time. Any other review problems? Seventy four. Sure. That's a good one. Okay, so this is all compound interest. So our compound interest formula had that the new total, new amount, whatever we called it, is the principal times 1 plus the rate per payout. Um, yes, but it doesn't have any of them using some of annuity do. And then way up in the exponent is the number of payments. <coughs> okay, this looks familiar. You've seen this formula lots before. So for Huey, It's going to be weekly. So that means whatever this weird bank account Huey has, the money was put in only once. That $5,000 is a present, and that's it. It's not like every year we get 5000 more. That would be some of annuity due. But just once, Huey gets 5000 bucks, and then watches it grow doing nothing for 13 years. <laughs> so it's always smart to list out all our variables because this is where things get tricky. Uh, I did the wrong color. Okay, so this is what we're solving for. This is our 5,000. This one is 0 0.09 per year. This is 13 years. Everyone okay with my setup so far? All I've done is write the compound interest formula and read the things from the paragraph. I haven't actually done any math yet. Okay, I'm going to make a new slide and paste it. A new slide and paste it because we have two other ducks. Okay. If this was a simple interest or some of it we could do formula, the per year would be great. Both of those other formulas always want years everywhere. But in this case, years is wrong. We know we don't want years because the green underlining says compounded weekly. So we have to get rid of the years and make them weeks. So how do we do that? Yeah, which one is divide? The rate per payout or the number of payouts? Yeah. 
and this one is going to be times 52. So the 0.09 doesn't happen every week. That would be an amazing amount of interest. Instead, we have to share it, pass it out a little tiny bit to each of the 52 weeks. And how many payouts happen? A huge number of them. Every week, this thing triggers and gets a little more money for 13 years. If you want... So this one is weekly, I'm sorry. This one is weekly, because up at the top it says that Huey is weekly. Okay. So if you want, you could actually do the division and make a tiny little decimal and plug it in your calculator each time. Or if you want, you can use parentheses in your calculator and put these just where they go in the formula. Both are good plans. I'm going to do the first one because I know at least one person watching this doesn't do parentheses in the calculator very well. So if you don't like itty bitty decimals, you can always just plug things in the other way. Okay, so this is going to be about 0, 0, 1, 7, 3, 1. And that's 676. This is now per week. And this is weeks. And we're happy. Everything is weeks. Yay. Okay, everyone okay with the tricky part? So, how'd you get the six seventy six? It's thirteen times times fifty two. We will because of this one here. Okay, so now I just plug things in. New amount. Equals 5,000. And now we're going to do a 1. 0. 0, 0.00, whatever this thing is. 1731. And the exponent. 676. I'm just going to move that down a little bit so the exponent looks more distinct. Okay. Oh, why did it do that? Okay. Okay, everyone with me so far? This was the easy step. I just took the other thing plug them in the formula. The only thing that might look at all subtle is where did my parentheses go? I don't need them because putting a one in front of a little decimal is so easy to do. Okay, calculator, it's your turn to earn your keep. So 5,000 times 1.001731 exponent 676. You will round a little differently if you chose to put parentheses 1 plus 0 0.09 divided by 52 close parentheses right here. If you're that style of doing things, then this will be a tiny bit different. And that's okay. If we're looking at sense, this is wrong anyway. a bank would actually, each of these 676 things, round to the nearest cent. They're not going to let you hang on to fractions of a cent from step to step. But the calculator exponent doesn't round each of those little steps. So this isn't going to actually match the real life anyway. But close, pretty close. I hope there was an Eddie Murphy movie about that at one point. Office Space. There was another one about that. Okay. Everyone okay with Huey? 
Ding, 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 ding. So, we're actually almost done. It looks like we're a third done because there's still two more docks, but this is almost the same. So, for the next one, now we're on Dewey. And Dewey is compounded monthly. Even go back and look at that stuff. Maybe it's not going to help me or waste time. Okay. So Dewey is just like Huey, same five thousand dollar present, same interest rate, but now it's compounded monthly. So it is still true that yours is broken. That's not what we want. How do we make things monthly? We change the 52. Yeah, instead of a divided by and a times with 52. Rounded point oh nine divided by two. Oh no, it's not rounded. I'll get it. So now these are per week. And how many weeks? Oh, it, um, month, I'm sorry. Brain part. Okay, per month. Months. And that's what we want because it's compounded monthly. So here it's going to be a one point zero zero seven five, and the exponent is one fifty six. around the page for no good reason. Okay, so a little over 16,000, a little over 16,000. Why would the first brother have slightly more money? And the second brother. Maybe I did it wrong. Let's see. Five thousand. That's five thousand. One point zero zero one seven three one is nine. Not am getting that. I'm getting that amount for the I got, first one. I got this one for the second one, but for the first one, I got actually going to make that much of a difference. Okay. 
But again, you round it a little differently here, which is fine. Yours is probably more accurate, but you're still whole. That's probably a bigger number for the first duck than the second one. So does it make sense that the first brother that has more compounding comes out with slightly more money? Yeah, there's more chances it, for the money to build on itself. But we're slicing the pie so thin that it doesn't actually help that much. So we'll expect the third brother to get something that's again about this amount, but slightly smaller still, because there'll be the fewest amounts of compounding. So now we are on Louis. That one is compounded annually. So, ta da, we're ready. We don't have to do any stuff in green. It's already years. We're already happy. with all three of these. If you can do that, you can do any compound interest problem. If you have parentheses keys, doesn't yours have parentheses? No, it does. I said, I, I, this the, I just got it like last week, so uh, I was doing it on my phone before that. It was... Okay, question. So, I had a different answer for three. Um, because I used the entire... Yep, yes. Okay, so that's the only way I got the right answer um, was to subtract Dewey from Huey to get that. Ah, uh, so on the turn it in answer key, then yeah. if you round to... Okay. Yeah. I might want to change my fake answers then to make it more obvious that if you round it slightly differently, this yeah, is still the right level. The entire Seven, six, nine. Yeah, that's the mo that's the most accurate way to do it. Okay. So you oh. subtracted what? Oh, so the so the end. She's of the saying answer. that when you're turning it in, it asks you the difference between the brothers. So I might need to make my multiple choice categories on the homework page a little farther apart, so that it's clear that yeah, I round it a little differently than you hear, because after all, we're just sort of estimating like their college funds, right? We're not going to be right to the dollar anyway. So um, the, the homework might need a little more clearing up, but that's a different issue from the lecture. So. OK, good problem, good review. There's still no due date for this assignment, by the way, since we are still having questions about it. Okay, other things, questions from your midterm, other homework questions. Okay. Um, 73. So this one, it doesn't say compounded at all. Instead, it's saying simple interest, so that's a different formula. And that formula always wants years. That's how it's designed and built. So that one is interest. It's principal. Times rate. Times time.
Same thing. The hard part is going to be in blue, where they try and trick us with time frames or something like that. Simple interest problems. Also, before I really jump in, I haven't even really read the problem yet. I want to pay attention. Is it asking at the very end for the interest or the total amount? Because simple interest problems have a bad habit of flipping back and forth. And sometimes they ask for the interest, and sometimes they ask for the total amount. So all of the other ones, the, comp the compound interest and the sum of annuity do, those problems always ask for the total amount. And that's what the formula spits out. If for some odd reason we had said, how much did Louis gain? We could always subtract the 5,000 he started with. It's not like you can't get that information. But you'll probably never have a problem that asks you to do that. Whereas in simple interest, all the time, sometimes you want the total, sometimes you want the interest. So let's figure that one out. So how much was borrowed? Ah, OK, so that's going to be even different. Okay, everyone okay so far? I'm going to write simple interest on the top. I'm going to move these up a little. Okay, so the interest is 1615. The principal is what we're solving for. The rate was 120%. So now I'm going left out of percent. And that's an annual simple interest rate, so that's per year. And it's two weeks. Okay, everyone okay with my setting up so far? I'm still just writing things down in their spots. I haven't done any math yet. I'm just recording. Okay, one of these numbers needs adjustment. The time? The time, yeah. Simple interest, again, has to be years. So we have to take the weeks and divide it by 52. get about 0 0.03846 of a year. Two divide now? It looks right to me. And again, if you round, if you didn't round, if you just put two divided by 52 in parentheses, then you're going to get a very slightly different answer, but maybe not even off by a cent for this formula, because there's no exponent. Okay, everyone okay with the green? Why we did a divide by 52, even though the time was had multiplying last formula? If it helps you to think of a fraction as 2 over 52 of a year, that's fine too. Fraction bar means division. Some people like that. Yes. So obviously, I'm wrong, but you want to take 1.2 divided by 52 and then times it by 2? Um, that's kind of what we're doing. Okay. So I'm just going to do it in the order that the formula says because otherwise I confuse people. Whoops, no, I'm messing up. 16.15 is the interest. Equals our principal times 
the 1.2 times the 0 0.03846. So that's where I plug things in and actually the rate spot. Okay. Everyone okay with my plugging things in? I was running on autopilot by habit and putting interest equals, but we have the interest this time. So these two are something. So times 1.2, I'm getting 0 0.04615389. I'm not actually rounding as much because I'm just keeping things in my calculator on the screen. Okay, so one step was to take these two numbers and squish them together. Because it says to do that 1.2 times my ULA. Now I have something equals P times something else. How do I get P by itself? Yeah. Divide by the one that's stuck onto P or times. So divide by that thing. Divide by that thing. So 16.15. This is a great time to use your previous answer key on the calculator, so you don't have to type that all out. So I'm getting about $350. Everyone else get the same when you type it in? You could imagine that, whatever, your water heater broke paydays and for another couple weeks it's worth 16 bucks to be able to fix your water heater right now. If you haven't read that article, then it's a fascinating thing. People look at a high interest rate of a payday loan and say, this is terrible, you must be taking advantage of the poor people in that community, but it's really not such a simple thing. Most things in life are not as simple as they sound. Thank you for the questions. Okay. So finally, pricing. Yay. Okay, markup and margin. This is a tricky thing only because everyone is sloppy and uses the word profit when they shouldn't. So I purposely left profit out of the title of this section. So this is mostly vocabulary. We only have 10 minutes. That's okay. We'll get some done. As usual, when we start a new topic with only 10 minutes, next class, we're just going to pretend we're starting all over. But this will get it in your brain a little bit over the weekend. First, the word price. Actually, first, is this big enough in the back? Should I make everything one bigger before I start scrolling? The word price can be ambiguous. Are we talking about the price a business pays to its supplier, or are we talking about the price the customer pays when they shop? So we will always be careful and say wholesale cost or selling price, so we know which of these two prices we're talking about. Not every book or website will be so polite, so just sort of be a heads up if you are finding other videos that make people happy online or things like that. Okay, we're going to start with the word that of margin and markup is probably least familiar to you, depending on your background, just because in some ways it's the more important one. The difference between what it sells for and what it costs to the business is called the margin amount. You just subtract. 
So the store acquires something for 10 bucks, they sell it for 100 somehow, they get 90 bucks margin. You can think about it two ways, that the big number minus the small number is the difference, or you start at the wholesale, add that margin, and then you get up high to the selling price. I'm not going to take time with only 10 minutes to actually write this all out by hand, but next time we will, and I'll say, oh, look, we can subtract, right? So margin has this attitude that we're starting with the retail selling price and going down. Does that make sense? If we're looking down towards the lower wholesale cost, how far down do we have to go? And that attitude is as important as the fact that we're subtracting. Because if we're looking for a percent change, thank you again, McKenna, for your wonderful segue before, the percent change, the original, we have to know which one is original. So if you're in a margin mindset, your original is the selling price. That's the more expensive amount where you're sort of standing up there at the price tag, looking down, and then the new amount will be what the store had to pay wholesale to get that thing. Does that make sense? So if you are only used to thinking in terms of wholesale costs looking up towards the selling price, this is going to seem backwards to you. But for a lot of businesses, this is the right way to do it. So the margin rate is just the percent change formula. The change is the margin amount, and the original is the selling price. Because we're looking down from the selling price to see what has happened. So again, I will write this out slower and more carefully on Tuesday, but for now, the change was 20, the original was 80, so we get a 25% margin rate. This lecture, this website, your homework will always be very careful with words and say margin amount, which is the dollars, or the margin rate, which is the percent change. If you just said the margin and didn't say amount or rate, it would be ambiguous. Are we talking about the dollar amount or are we talking about the percent change? So you have to say margin amount or margin rate so people know what you're doing. Okay. The other way to do things is markup. Markup is the difference between the selling price and wholesale cost, but now we're looking up. We are still subtracting, because when you're subtracting with prices, you have to do the bigger minus the smaller. You can't have a negative amount. So the markup amount and the margin amount are just two different names for the same thing. But the markup rate, now when I do my percent change formula, because I'm starting down at the wholesale cost and looking up at the selling price, now my original is the wholesale cost. So in that same dress example, it's still a $20 change, but since the original now is the smaller number, when I do the division, it will be bigger. Again, just like that example problem with the paintings appreciating we did earlier in class. So the same business sale had a 25% margin rate and a 33% markup rate because the percent change adjusts from if you're having a bigger or smaller, quote, original amount. So if you're not used to that, then this is the tricky part to get in your brain. All we're doing is the percent change formula. Division isn't hard, but the business world can be confusing because of how they do things. Sure. Sure. Say that question was on the final. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do I know that we're doing markup rate? Because it will say markup rate. It needs both of those words. Okay. It needs so is it margin or markup? And is it the rate or the amount? 
But how do we know what formula to use? Because in markup, it's always true that the divided by original is divided by wholesale cost. Out of hand, right? Out of hand. Or markup, markup. Out of hand. And the other one, then it's saying, whoops, that should be rate. Let me make a little note myself. Rate typo. Okay. And the other one, there we go. Margin. needs to match. Okay. So we have these four things. Margin amount, margin rate, markup amount, markup rate. And these two amounts are the same. They're just different names for it. So the old and busted style was to use phrases markup on selling price and markup on wholesale cost, calling margin a kind of markup. But that's not what we'll do. That's too confusing. Margin is margin. We don't want to call it margin. So read more about that. We'll talk about it more next time. So why is margin important? Why is it a good use to, good word to use? Because margin is not profit. If I can get a phone to sell for two hundred and it cost my store one hundred, I don't have a hundred dollars of profit. I have $100 of margin, but while selling that store, selling the phone, it wasn't just that I had to pay for the phone for 100 I also have to pay the employees and the rent and the lights and the insurance and everything, right? So profit is less than margin. But you and me and most people are really sloppy, and we just say profit when we mean margin. And I am not going to get on your case for that, but you need to get on my case. If I have accidentally used the word profit in any of this, when I should be using margin, just because until a couple weeks ago I was sloppy, then correct me. Okay, so that's markup and margin. Pricing is all the complications that come into that, because it's not quite so easy. And so there's things we will get to, like penetration into society. This is a fascinating picture where when they were introduced, very few people had autos, and then more percentage of the households had them, and it kind of went up and down. And then after the war, everyone started getting cars, and then it leveled up, but it's not at 100, it's only at like 92. Uh, internet, where is it? Here is internet. So internet started there, shot up very quickly. The same number of people now have dishwashers and internet. Interesting stuff. So that will affect your pricing in ways that goes beyond just the formulas we looked at. Where's another cute picture? So people get upset at Apple when it gets bad publicity because when a phone or a tablet is new and hot, they sell it for what's called the skin price that's very expensive. And then over time, the price goes down and stabilizes, and that's what's called a penetration price. Once it's not new and hot, so that's something we'll talk about next week. And then there's dynamic pricing, where as the time of day goes on, from midnight to noon to midnight again, different online retailers are changing the price of something because people are home from work and shopping and so on. So that's, again, more than just our formulas. Is that a legit study? Um, it might not be anymore, but it was when it was published. Um, things are even worse now. We'll talk about that because now they have more things going on. And then entrees, some of you might be here for culinary program stuff. And then uh, restaurant pricing has its own issues. So that's just sort of a real quick two-minute overview of how pricing is more than just margin and markup. <coughs> Okay, have a great weekend. If you haven't finished looking at your midterm from Tuesday to do all of your corrections, do that so you have something great to study with. If you need a book for a book report, then grab another one of those. And I guess that's all for now.